What's up people, it's DevSage here, and in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you about closures in JavaScript. So what is a closure? A closure is just a function that is bundled together with references to its surrounding state. That's it, that's all a closure is. It's a function that is bundled together with references to any of its surrounding state. This surrounding state might also be called its lexical environment or lexical scope. Uh, so what do I mean by all that? So let's say we have a function. Let's call this function run. And inside of this function, we're going to have a variable called name. And the name is going to be devsage. And inside of run, we're also going to have another function called print and print is going to console log name and now inside of run we're going to call print and then outside of everything we're going to call run so we have this function run it has a name variable it has an inner function print which prints the value of that name variable now notice how name is inside of run but not necessarily inside of print but when we run this uh, let's let's run this real quick to see what happens. Let's save. We can see that devsage gets printed out. So we call run, run goes in. We call print in print console logs name. But name isn't defined inside of print's scope. So how is print able to access name when name is not defined inside of it? Well, that's because print is a closure when we do when we nest a function inside of a function like this we create a closure the inner function is a closure it's a function that is bundled together with references to its surrounding state in this case the surrounding state is the name variable so that's all we mean by closure let's see another example so now we're going to create a function that is going to add two numbers together but we're gonna do it in a way that you're probably not familiar with. So let's say we have a function adder, and this function is going to take in a single argument, x, and adder is going to actually return another function that's going to take in another argument, y. x and y in this case are gonna be the two numbers that we wanna to add together. But instead of doing something like function add x, y, we're basically creating a, a partially applied function in which we pass one argument in at a time. So don't worry if you don't know what that means at, at first, I'm gonna explain it, but we're just gonna return x plus y inside of this inner function here. So let's go down here and let's say Let's create a new variable called add 10. And we're gonna assign that to adder. And we're gonna pass in 10. So what does this do? This looks kind of strange. So adder, our outer function, takes in a single argument, x. In this case, that's gonna be 10. And we've named our function add 10. And what this does is it returns another function that takes in another variable. So in essence, add 10 is just a function signature, right? So if you can imagine, this might look a little weird at first, but because adder returns a function, we can actually do something like this, where we pass in like another argument, another, we, we basically call a function on top of a function and we can pass in another argument. So if the 10 here represents the X from the outer function, the inner function that we're returning, we can basically call it and pass in Y here. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna return 10 plus 30. And just so you know I'm not lying to you, let's console log add 10, 40. All right, so this is cool but let's take a closer look at this. 
So instead of calling the outer function and the inner function immediately, let's just let's get rid of the inner function call. So add 10 right now is storing the signature to the inner function. So we can basically take it and hold it in our hand and call it whenever we want to instead of instead of calling it immediately right here. So what we've effectively done though when we did that is we're creating a closure, right? We have a function that we're passing in 10 to and that 10, this value 10 is being held here in the X variable, right? Whenever we go to call the inner function, the outer function is going to remember the value we originally passed in for X here. So what we can do is, let's say we do some other work here. Da, 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 da. Later on down the line, we can console log add 10 and then pass in some value we want to add 10 to, let's say five. So this should give us five plus the add 10 that we originally passed in the 10 here. So we get 15. Did you catch that? Let's take a closer look. So remember, adder here, we're passing in the value 10. So that goes in and adder is going to return a function signature for the inner function that's going to actually do the summing. So this inner function signature is being stored in this add 10 variable. So we can basically take this function signature and call it whenever we want to, which is what we're doing down here. But when we do that, we have to basically take a snapshot of the lexical environment of the outer function. JavaScript is going to remember the value that we originally passed in, 10. And it's going to hold that value inside of x because the inner function needs x to do the calculation here. So JavaScript is going to remember this. So remember what I said about a closure. A closure is a is a function that is bundled together with references to its surrounding state. So this inner function becomes a closure because it brings in X from the outer scope. So that's why we're able to later on down the line, uh, basically call add 10 and pass in five and we get 10 plus five because of the five we passed in here and then the 10 that it remembered from the original step on line nine here because of the inner function being a closure. I hope all of that made sense. Um, you probably don't see functions returning functions every day like this. So if you need to go back and rewatch this to get a better understanding, I highly encourage that. I got a feeling if you watch it like slowly enough or pay close enough attention, it'll just click at some point. But uh, yeah, if you if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Please like this video, share this video, subscribe if you want to see more web dev explained simply. But other than that, peace.